Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In past videos, you've seen me upgrading the control boards for each of my 3D printers to Marlin 1.1.8, which is the latest version without going into some of the more advanced beta ones that are coming out and things. Uh, in this video, we're gonna, and, and a few subsequent ones on 3D printing, we're going to upgrade some of the hardware to um, rectify some of the failings, in this case of the Tronxy X5S, to make it better. I'm also going to upgrade the controller on this one. Uh, we're going to take it up to 24 volts and uh, I'm also going to put in a Ramps 1.4 board. The reason, one of the reasons I wanted to change it was because I want to add auto bed leveling and things onto here. So I need the extra memory so that I can have all of the features enabled. And also uh, I want to be able to put a BL touch on and there's not enough IO on the original Melzi board to be able to do that, not without you know soldering on wires directly to the chip or anything like that. And I'm not about to start that, it's not worth it. So I figured I'd show you how to do the upgrades and what hardware upgrades I'm going to do. Um, for the ramps board, I'm also gonna show you how to modify it to use 24 volts um, and I'm also modifying the fuses on it so that they will properly support 24 volts because the ones that are on there do not and we'll go into that when we get to that part of it. Uh, for now the first thing I'm going to start with is replacing some of the hardware on the top of the printer. So what we have here and I'll put some static pictures up to show you a little clearer is some misaligned belts. So the run from, for instance, this pulley to here going across to the printer, you can actually see that it runs at an angle. So as the head moves closer to this side, the angle becomes more acute. It increases tensions um, on the belts. It decreases accuracy and things like that. Um, also, the belt running from the motor down to the x-axis and across to the head also has quite a sharp angle on it as well. So that all needs to be rectified. On top of that, the plexiglass brackets that hold the motors in place uh, and also for these pulleys, although these pulleys are pretty well secured at this end, they're very flexible. So as you tension the belt, which you want it to be tight, um, they pull up and so uh, you know, I'm kind of moving that right now. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit and show you. All right, so here's one of my motor mounts. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spring the belts. And you can actually see the motor mount pulling up there. It's not much, but it'd be enough that when the motor spins and starts pulling on the belts and it lifts, it's going to add inaccuracies. That's going to get reflected in the prints as well. So I want to fix all that. Um, I'm going to replace some of the plexi all the plexiglass pieces here, um, including the plexiglass carriageway for the holding the x-axis in, uh, the pulley mounts on the front, and the motor mounts on the back, with some PETG printed parts that I've got. I'll provide the links to the Thingiverse um, models that I used for this. I didn't design them myself. They were purpose designed for the Tronxy X5S, and they actually looked pretty good. Haven't tried them yet, so can't guarantee how good they will be at the end of the day. But um, I've got them printed already, and they actually do look like they're going to do the job well. Um, I'll show you those now. Once I've shown you them, I'm just going to start taking this apart um, off camera. You've already seen me assemble this whole thing, and I don't think you want to bother sitting there watching me disassemble this just to replace the other pieces. Once I have them on, I'll start recording again, and... Um, We'll see how well these are operating. In the meantime, I want to show you the parts that I quickly printed before I do that. Okay, so here are a lot of the pieces that I have um, printed. The red PETG are for the carriages. There will be one on each side, and the carriage will be mounted in these um, places here. The 2020s will sit in here and be securely screwed on. There'll be one for each side. Um, and then the pulleys will be on here as well. I've got two new PETG motor mounts. These also have uh, side flanges, so they're going to help uh, stop any flexing because they'll be screwed onto the vertical as well as horizontal 
um, 2020 sections of extrusion. Uh, so there's two of those. And then for the pulleys, we have a new corner bracket, which has the pulleys now offset so that the belt should all nicely be aligned. And then the other piece I've got goes on the back of the carriage, the uh, actual head carriage, that allows you to have some belt map mounts behind the carriage so that you can get all the belts there all squared away as well. So everything is perpendicular or parallel to the paths of travel. And then there's a few little green um, spaces printed off so that we can uh, set the height of the belts correctly as well. So those are all the pieces that are going on. So I have to take apart the top section of the printer slightly to do that. And once I've got them all put on, I will bring you back. Okay, I've changed a lot of the parts on the printer now. Um, got the belt reattached. I haven't fully tightened it yet because I've come across a small issue. But first of all, I will go through the parts that I've changed. As you can see here, I've got all of the um, motor mounts, the pulley mounts, all assembled. I actually had to print some small little spaces for the pulleys because the ones that were on the X5S to start with were way too big. They were just really cheap, uh, big penny type washers and they would overlap. They didn't sit down very well or anything. So I quickly designed a uh, smaller PETG washer that had a little bit of spacing in, just nice for the GT2 belts and I've used those instead. I will provide a link to the model. Um, I'm going to put it up on Thingiverse so if you want to use it yourself with uh, an upgrade, it will not just work with the X5S, it will pretty much work with any um, printer that needs the little washers on top of the bearings. Uh, what else I've added is, um, oh, the down here we have a, the place where the micro switch went for the Z and Y axis. Um, originally, they were on a uh, there is a here, little bracket that uh, allowed it to basically mount on the 2020 frame, but because of the size of the corner piece, it wouldn't fit anymore. The, the corner piece for this side also came with um, the mount. I will take some close-up so that I can show you all these. Uh, for a micro switch for the Y axis and there was a separate piece which I've just figured out what it was for which is actually for the Z axis micro switch uh, to mount on now so you can adjust it quite nicely uh, it's not just fixed into the corner or you know everything moving together so that gives a bit more independence on the adjustment which is really nice now one of the things once I put this all back together again that I noticed was how loose the, I'm mean, just going to zoom in on that so I can show you it properly. There we go. So you can see the uh, head here and it just moves around horribly. There's, um, unfortunately, there's no adjustment whatsoever to get those idler wheels to increase the tension. There's just three holes drilled through this uh, metal plate a uh, nice flat metal plate, and that is it. So unfortunately, I'm uh, going to have to do something about that because without doing anything about it, it is going to just give horrible prints. And it might explain why there was a little bit of the artifacting on the prints. It didn't show up so much earlier, but maybe now that it's been used a little bit and things have bedded in a bit, uh, it's showing up even more. And it, there doesn't seem to be any excessive wear on the pulleys that would explain it. I think it's just, um, you know, I had to loosen these top two screws to fasten this back bracket on for straightening out the belt at the back. And I think that there's just play in it and there's no real adjustment except for maybe the slop of the screws in the hole, which means that anything you do there is gonna be short lived. If, you know, a few vibrations moving around printing and it's gonna start drifting again. And it's so loose, I could probably just pull it off the track. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the main mounting bracket for the head. And what I've done is uh, taken 
uh, I wouldn't say Liberty because it's what it's there for, but this whole machine is built using Open Build's V Groove extrusions. And as such, I can use Open Build plates to replace this plate here and have the advantage then that I could start using an eccentric nut to allow me to do adjustments. It would also give me a bit bigger plate so that I can have other mounting options for things on here as well. And the nice thing with the open build system is they, it's, well, it's open. They provide all of the designs free for you to download. So I downloaded the step files for the um, Y gantry plate, both the large one and the small one. And what I'm going to do is mount the large one on the front and the small one on the back to provide a very rigid um, solution to having the head mounted and, I, and I now with also having the eccentric nut there it will allow me to do some uh, very nice tightening up and adjusting of the head to really lock that down and get it to run smooth and have no play in there whatsoever. I'll put a link to the plates um, that are up on the open build site. You can download the designs for all of the parts that the open build systems use. Uh, the two plates that I chose to use are these ones here which is the large universal build plate and the smaller one. They're both able to adapt anything from a 2020 rail up to bigger rails. Well, this one will only go up to a 2020, um, but this universal large one will actually work on a much, much bigger plate as, uh, extrusion as well. Um, I have it mounted on the end of a 2060 at the moment. Uh, it's the only piece I had laying around that was available. But the dimensioning of these things are exactly the same. When you go on the 2020 width, uh, it's the same as the 2060 on the 2020 side. So um, I've just been using this to test for fit and everything else. Now, I didn't have anything handy yet. I haven't finished my uh, CNC updates so that I can cut some aluminum plates. So what I did was I cut these out of some thick acrylic. Um, and I'm going to use this smaller one to go on the back of the um, 2020. Right now I've just got it sitting with its own wheels on the front. And I'm going to use this bigger one on the front. That allows me, um, it would basically be mounted uh, this way. And I'll have the head mounted on here, but it gives me room to mount the uh, drag chain and any other sensors and things like that that I want as well. Um, and there are holes in here that I could attach GT2 belts to and things as well if I wanted to do that. So I don't know whether I'm going to have to do anything to adjust for the keeping the back belts straight, but we'll see when I get this assembled and onto the head assembly. Now the really nice thing about the head assembly is that it's already built on a 2020 extrusion. So I know that the certainly the vertical pitch of the wheels are going to be exactly the same as this. And I measured the uh, pitch of the wheels left to right and they're uh, four centimeters or 40 millimeters apart. And that's how far apart they are on the current plate as well. So I should be able to take that plate and literally mount it on top of here along with this uh, so that I can actually mount the head and everything else without doing anything uh, weird to get all that going, like drilling extra holes and things. The other nice thing too is that I have all these extra holes now to put um, part cooling in a different position if I want. Uh, the BLT touch I could mount on here. I could put um, two wheels on the bottom if the one wheel isn't enough, etc. Now the reason I want to put the uh, back plate, the smaller one, on as well is that if you look at this, I can actually, because plexiglass does have flex in it, I can actually lift this enough that I could pull it off. It will twist the plexiglass a little bit. That's why normally these would be made out of aluminum. But if I use the smaller one on the back of the wheels, then that will completely eliminate that torsion effect and keep this very rigid on the 2020 in the center. Um, the 2020 itself doesn't really flex, not, especially not for 3D printing, because there aren't enough um, loads in any direction to be able to make it flex. So I'm not having an issue there. I just don't want this, um, you know, pulling off due to the torsion of the belts and things when it moves quickly. So I'll put both of these on for that purpose. Anyway, so the next thing I need to do is 
um, take apart the head, remove it, and see about getting this all fitted on. Now, just before I will do that, I will just make sure that the assembly that I've done is all working properly. So if we go back up to the head here and just zoom in a little bit, um, we sh I should be, everything is now wired back up the way it was. I should be able to um, home the head and everything else. So let me just power this up and we'll make sure that mechanically everything is working before I change the head mechanics here. Okay, everything's powered on. I've just loaded up Prontoface so that we can have a look at the control panel. I won't bother showing you the screen of Prontoface because it's... So now we all should be able to do our homing. So let's find out. Just going to connect. Okay, we're connected. Let's hit home. Okay, there is the X. Good. Good. Should go back to the center because that's what we set the software to do. And we've got the micro switch right here that will be hopefully heading before the head hits. So if I adjusted everything correctly, I just did it manually. Yep, there we go. So mechanically, we're looking good. So now it's just a case of fixing the head. Okay, so I've taken the gantry plate off, the y-axis and the gantry plate, disconnected everything. I'll show you some statics of that as I was disassembling it. And you can see now how loose this is. It just rattles around like crazy. There are no adjustments and there's just plastic washers, spaces in here to keep things apart. So. This really is not very good. Now the nice thing is that these three mounting points should fit right where these three wheels are because they're the same spacing. And so we should be able to take this plate, which is all threaded and everything nicely already, for our head and put it on the front of the plexiglass plate that we're going to use. So, as you can see, this thing just flops around like crazy and we'll have that all fixed up nicely and working a treat. You can see if I take that off and put one of these on here, even before I start there is no flopping around anymore. It's nice and solid and I have an eccentric nut which will allow me to let me get that into shot, eccentric nut that will allow me to adjust this even better for a nice smooth and solid fit. Anyway, let me just get that assembled. I will take a couple of close-ups as I'm doing it so that you can see how I've put it together. Okay, so here we are now. Everything all put back together. And uh, looks like it's nice and solid. All the belts are nicely tightened up. A little bit of a twang to them, which is nice. A little bit stiff to move around, but I think that's the nature of trying to... Um, move two belts at the same time in different directions and things like that, but it's not too bad. Um, the wobble that I had on the uh, Y gantry is completely gone. Um, no wobble there at all. So uh, let me just give you a closer look of this and I can show you how it's... I've got the new fully 3D printed part here that attaches the belts to on the back for alignment. I modified one that I'd found. Actually, I didn't modify it. I actually created a new one from scratch. I'll uh, share the files so that it extends out beyond the um, open build plate that I had here. So, as I said, these two were cut on my laser cutter, but you can buy them ready done out of aluminum if you want to as well. You don't have, you know, if you don't have the facility to cut or drill them, um, then that is a perfectly viable option. As you can see in here, let me just zoom that in so you can really see in there. So, as you can see in here, I've got the plexiglass plate at the back, then I have the 3D printed part to attach the pulleys to that come out slightly further. I wanted to use this because the um, putting the spaces in here uh, to correctly keep this plate away from the 2020 extrusion meant that these back belts would be sticking out a little bit too far and I didn't want that. So the original design before we took all this apart, if you remember there was a 3D printed part but it was the wrong width to fit in here. Uh, these are 6.4 uh, 
uh, millimeter spaces that are in here and the part that was in here was about eight millimeters. It was also not long enough to get beyond this standard plate. Now I could have um, just simply modeled this standard plate and added the extra pieces to it, but I wanted to keep it absolutely standard so that if you wanted to get one yourself, then you could just buy one online if you wanted to. Or you could just take the um, files from open builds and just even 3D print one out of PETG or ABS or something. The files are there and they're free to download so you could e easily do that. Um, the other part that I did as you can see here is that these slots were already part of this frame and they happen to fit nicely to attach the um, belt on this side and keep it level as well which is kind of cool. Um, on the front I did screw the original plate to the front of the plexiglass uh, just to make it easy to mount the head. The two screws for the extruder um, that are part of this build do not fit perfectly into the holes from the open build universal build plate. I could have simply printed a small adapter which I think I might do because one of the things I'm doing with my um, TiVo Black Widow is to put a universal adapter so that you can put lasers and various other things and make it very easy for adjustments around this area and so what I want to do is maybe do a, something similar for this but based on using one of the open builds universal plates. Now why am I so keen on the universal plates? Well all of this machine and the TiVo Black Widow and many many others are all built on using um, V-slot open builds extrusions. My HC Maker 7, the TiVo Black Widow, the Tronxy X5S and many many other 3D printers all use this standard extrusion type which has the V-grooves in it and this is an open build standard so why not use industry standard open, well industry standard, open builds standard parts. The wheels are all uh, the same uh, you know, so these plates are designed to work with 2020, 2040, um, you know, shaped, sized extrusions. So it makes it very, very easy to do something. So by putting one of these on here or any other of my 3D printers as a matter of, um, you know, doing it over time means that I could use some common um, mounting options for probes and heads and everything else just based on using these plates because every printer I've got right now they're all different I can't take the head off my TiVo and put it on here I can't take the head off of this put it on the TiVo I can't put it on the AC Maker 7 because all of them have their slight differences in the mounting designs it will be really nice is if all the printer manufacturers started using standard parts um, they're quick to brag that they're using you know standard extrusions but they're not using the standard plates that go with it. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just you know, making the plate to be standard for my printers. Um, and as I said, I'll share all of that information with you guys. Now, the last thing is to just quickly get it to do another home again. So let me just turn it on and I'll show you. This would complete the hardware upgrades for the printer. I do have some electronic upgrades I want to do. I want to put a BL Touch on here or some other uh, sensor. Uh, I want to upgrade the controller board to use the RAMPS 1.4 or a 32-bit controller board as well. But as long as I can still stick with using Marlin 1.1.8 or the new version 2 that's still in beta, but it you know you're, it's available to download and put a new LCD display on. So that's going to be a separate video. I don't want this one to be too long. So the final thing I want to do here is just to verify that it's going to home okay, that my motor currents are all okay, uh, because these are quite tight now that nothing is um, bending. I've, able to, I've been able to tighten these quite a way up. So let's connect to the printer using uh, Prontoface. Okay, we're now connected. And I'm just going to hit a home all So quite quiet, it's not too bad at all. And there we go, all done. Now I haven't finally adjusted the, the bed or anything yet, um, but it looks like 
the hardware is now all put together. I will, as I said, show you some close-ups of the new belt alignments so that you can see that that is all very well put together. I'll provide all the links to the pieces that I used and I didn't have to use new belts. Um, all the adjustments that I did, I kept the same bearings for these pieces and with having the extra length on here, um, it actually gave me a little bit extra belt um, length left. But because of the way that these pulleys now work, I'm not going to cut them short uh, just in case I want to tweak things again sometime in the future. But uh, this is now much, much better than what it was before. And uh, I'm not going to worry about trying to print things yet because I know my heat bed uh, doesn't get very hot yet. So I want to try and potentially up that to a 24 volt system. So I'm going to call this video done as far as the hardware upgrades are concerned. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.